Tip, it's my dog like tiptoeing around me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, we'll get started, Danielle. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Connection Live for the month of July. I'm Elizabeth Lee. I'm from the USO Military Spouse Programs team, and I'm so excited to be here today with all of you and with Evie King, our special guest for the month. So um, before I introduce her officially or have her introduce herself, please type in the chat box where you're viewing from. Um, let us know if you have any questions as we go along the chat. Evie is an expert on all things health and wellness. Just wait, she's gonna tell you all about it. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions that you have. Let us know where you're, where you're viewing in from and um, let's get started. Evie, welcome, we're so glad to have you here with us. Tell Thank us you all about you. Ah, oh, we're so glad you're here. Um, tell us about you. I understand you grew up as a military child and you're now a military spouse. Tell us all about you. Yes, so both of my parents were in the military. My uh, mother was a nurse and my dad was in the Signal Corps. Uh, actually, my mom was a higher rank than my dad. My mom was a captain when they met. My dad was a lieutenant, so my family loves to joke around that my dad had to salute my mom when they first met. <laughs> and we moved around a little bit. I was born in Colorado. Uh, we lived in Turkey for a little while. And then my dad got stationed at Fort Monmouth in New Jersey. And that's sort of where we you know, my dad left the military and then we sort of stayed there. That's where I went to college and that's where I met my husband who was in ROTC at the time. And I didn't really know what to expect um, because obviously as a military child, your experience is very different than when you're a military spouse or dating someone in the military. But he didn't really let me uh, like slowly dip into it. Three months after we started dating, he deployed with the New Jersey National Guard, which he was a part of at the time. So I sort of got a crash course into what that was like. And at the same time, the day that he left, I started to my drive to Ohio, which is was where I live for the first couple of years after getting out of college and where I worked. So I had that sort of like semi PCS experience also deploying at the same time, leaving family and friends, moving to a completely unfamiliar place. Uh, and so I, I sort of got the military experience without being a part of the military until we got married about three years later. Wow. That's a lot. So I'm curious, what was it like going through that first deployment as a spouse versus I would imagine you experienced deployments as a child growing up? How did that feel different to you? So actually, I didn't. My dad was in Desert Storm, but he never deployed. Um, he just pulled really, really long hours. And so the, the experience wasn't the same. But the, my experience going through a deployment when I was living in Ohio, just dating John was very different from my experience going through a deployment after we got married when, you know, we were, I was living at Fort Campbell when he deployed his third time. So he deployed twice while we weren't married and then once while we were. One time while he was in the National Guard and then two times while he was active duty. So I've had a little bit of a, a, a different experience and a lot of people who've just experienced all National Guard deployments or all active duty deployments. And I can say at the very first one, I had no one to talk to. I had no idea what that experience was like. I was doing it all on my own, um, not to mention living in a place that I don't, it, there were no military anywhere around North Carolina. I worked with one person whose spouse was in the Air Force National Guard and he had never deployed. So that was really interesting, especially considering I had just moved away from family. So I was going through this really big change myself, graduating from college, starting my you know big adult job, and then going through a deployment with my spouse who also had never gone through a deployment before. Uh, but something that I think really helped is really early on, so this was back in the day when you would get on Skype and you would try to do a Skype date and the person would just like freeze and you would get so frustrated because you spent all this time trying to make sure you had like all of your schedules linked up, but then the internet wasn't uh, cooperating, which I've heard is very different from deployments now where people have their phones, which is very different. Uh, we're, we're like the old school deployment right now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> where internet froze. Um, 
And we learned early on that we needed to be very transparent and open about what we were talking about. So, you know, we couldn't say things that would leave the other person, and by other person, I mean me, just sitting there dissecting for the next 24 to 48 hours before we were able to speak again. Like, what did he mean when he said this? And that has just really helped our communication since we've been married is just knowing, you know, like when we can't be with each other, that you really just need to say what it is that you mean and, you know, no sugarcoating, although you can say it nice, but be very clear, like clear communication is really important. And I'm very fortunate that we had, we were able to learn that early on. That's awesome. It's so important that you can establish that early, right? And, and get that sort of um, tempo set for honesty and openness and, and clarity in your communications. And I suppose that's a, a good segue into wellness. Um, tell us how you got into wellness and how that became a part of your life. I've always been interested in it more so from the food side. I really enjoy trying different foods and eating. And I grew up, my mom was a stay at home mom. She homeschooled all six of my siblings and I, so very busy, but she made all of her food from scratch. Rarely did we, did we have anything that was you know, pre-made or frozen. Um, so I think it was, a lot of people call it slow food. Apparently there's a slow food movement. We have to have everything, like everything needs a label. Uh, so yes, my mom was, uh, uh, she, she did the slow food thing. And then when I left, I knew nothing about eating well and nutrition. It was just, that's how I had always eaten. You know, we were big on making sure we had vegetables. We didn't eat a lot of starches. But then I started working and I realized that my eating habits were having an impact on my energy level, on the way that I was feeling. And so I started looking into how can I use food that's still delicious as fuel that is helping me on my wellness journey rather than preventing me from accomplishing the things that I enjoy doing, which travel, I love to go exploring and, you know, walking and everything like that. So that's really what started it. And then the way that I found independent is honestly just a Google search. I typed in, um, we were living in Korea at the time and Korea was really different. Everything that I was able to do in the States health wise, I sort of had to relearn how to do it in a foreign country um, because the commissary that we lived at was really small and the grocery stores around us, everything was in Korean. And so I didn't know what anything meant. Um, and the foods were different. The food composition was really different and that was impacting my body. So I typed in military spouse wellness and who popped up but independent because independent has the military spouse wellness summit as well as just everything we do really is about military spouse wellness um, and then by going through the military spouse you know we impact the entire military family in the military community and that's how i found independent and i just i loved it i finally found that there was a place for me to go and learn about things specific to the challenges that a military spouse has to deal with wherever they are in the world that the military sends their spouse and they're following along so why do you think it is so important for military spouses to focus on wellness? Maybe not just what they're eating, but wellness as a whole in, in everyday life. I think, so starting just within the individual, um, the military spouse generally is the person who is the constant in the family. You have the military member who is always leaving, going to training, work is hard to schedule around because it's constantly changing unless they're in a school and even then it's it's hard to rely on their schedule being consistent so if you have mili you know military children the military spouse is generally the one being the primary care you know caregiver for the family they're the one who is doing a lot of the meals and I really feel like when the military spouse is happy and healthy, that that impacts 
if they have children, if they don't, I don't have children, but you know, impacts their military children. It really impacts their spouse because their spouse is coming home to a happy, healthy home, eating food that again is fueling their body, um, being in an environment where it's not as stressful because everyone is again, happy and healthy. Um, and that just impacts, again, the nuclear military family. But then overall, as a community, because so much of what we do is interacting with other people and providing support, you can't do that if you're not taking care of yourself. Um, and it's really hard because you'll talk to a lot of military spouses who, at the end of the day, after, after everything that they've done for everybody else, they have maybe five, 10 minutes that they feel that they can devote to them. And so you have a lot of military spouses out there who are spending a lot of time taking care of others, but not necessarily themselves. And so here at Independent, we try to encourage military spouses by connecting them to the resources that are already available, providing information, you know, telling stories of other military spouses who are doing it, you know, we're all in the trenches together. We like to say that Independent is for military spouses by military spouses because we're going through many of the same similar things. We're all in different uh, chapters of our lives in different stages, but a lot of the same similarities. And so we want to encourage military spouses to take care of themselves and by doing so, positively impacting the military community. It's so important. Did I answer your question? I think so. I might have sure. taken it on a little bit of a tangent. It's okay. We'll circle back to it, but it, it really is cyclical, right? I mean, you take care of yourself, you take care of others, you take care of yourself because you can't take care of others if you're not taking care of yourself, right? Right. So right. you probably meet military spouses from all over the world every day through independent. What's the, what's the number one piece of advice that you give them? And maybe what's the number one question that they ask you? Twofold question here. Yes. Um, so it's, it's hard because there are so many things that come up quite frequently when I am talking just with military spouses and even just in my own life. And that is that there are periods of intense isolation, especially when you're going to a new place. Um, I experienced that the most when I moved to overseas to Korea um, and establishing that friend base is really important uh, to have. The internet is wonderful. It's, it's fantastic that we're able to communicate with people that we know, but you need those people in the location that you're at as well. Mm -hmm. um, I like to, you'll hear the comment, I'm sure military spouse yourself, friend dating, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then the other thing that comes up a lot is just how do you maintain a healthy lifestyle when your family is in these big periods of transition, whether that is a PCS, it could be um, your spouse is in a really difficult job, it could be if both of you are working, right? So when you're in, um, or a deployment, these, these periods of transition, when um, everything that was working before, you now have to redo. And so mm -hmm. the biggest piece of advice that I always say in those instances, when you're dealing with some transition or a little bit of overwhelm, is really look at what, how you're spending your time. And um, this goes to another question in the future, but I think it's really relevant now. Um, there's this book, 168 Hours by Laura Vanderkamp. And what I love about it is she says to do a time audit. And the reason that I'm really big on time and wellness is because a lot of times we use the excuse, I don't have time in order to take care of ourselves. So how do we give ourselves more time while still living within the time constraint, that time is a finite resource, right? So Laura really encourages people to audit their day or see how they're spending their time. And what I did one, one day was I just went around and like wrote on a notebook. But I think if we really even just sat down and thought, okay, what are some things that are sucking up our time? And then looking at those and saying, okay, is this purposefully how I want to spend my time? And if it's not, what can I do about it? So there are tons of free resources out there that you can take advantage of. Um, but also, I encourage people to see what can they let go of? What is no longer serving them? And what can they take off their plate? 
And it is, you know, especially when you and your spouse are both working, I am a huge fan of outsourcing. So what can you outsource in your life to make your life a lot easier? I mean, grocery stores now, right? At first, it was like a premium in order to order things from, uh, from like, Walmart and go pick them up. Now everything is like pretty much free for you to do that. Maybe like a slight upcharge, but think of the time that you're saving. And then from a wellness perspective, you are not, um, you are not walking through the whole store and then seeing things that maybe you would really not want to buy, but at the time you're maybe hungry and then you're like, Oh, this box of Reese's Puffs sounds really good right now. And so you throw it in your cart. So actually, not only are you saving time, you tend to make healthier choices. And in some ways you are saving money because you're not doing those impulse buys. Uh, so there are just so many different ways that I think that we can really evaluate how we're spending our time and how we're being purposeful with how we're spending our time. And then you realize you actually have more hours than you think. And what I really love about Laura Vanderkam's book is that she looks at it, instead of looking at it in a 24 hour day, she looks at it in a 168 hour week. And when you do that, it's really freeing when you all of a sudden realize, wow, I have more time than I realize, and I can actually do something for myself. And it's really, it's really just a wonderful feeling when you have that realization. I love that. I love that. That's such a good um, book to read and such a good piece of advice for people. And I have to tell you, I just ordered groceries for the first time a couple of days ago because I was at that point with you. We're both working. There's no time. I have two kids who are out of school and summer camp and jobs and meetings and everything. I thought, when am I going to get to the store? And I'm about to pick the kids up from summer camp and I don't have anything to give them for lunch because we were away for the long weekend. Um, I ordered right. groceries and I picked them up on the way home from summer camp pickup. And I remember thinking later in the day, that saved me so much time. And it saved me so much of the junk that, I, and I love Reese's Puffs. I totally <laughs> picked up Reese's Puffs because we were all shopping on an empty stomach. <laughs> But instead, you know, we got a couple of rotisserie chickens and we got some veggies and it was fine. It was good. And the kids were so happy. Um, so that's such a good piece of advice is um, outsourcing specifically ordering your groceries. Totally. Mm -hmm. that one. And I think okay. people think that those things are really expensive. But like you said, when you are not doing those impulse buys, you actually are spending a lot less. And so, yes. you know, that five dollar charge at the end of the day is less than what you probably would have spent if you did your grocery shopping and went walking, I which is sad because agree. I love grocery shopping. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you just have to say, okay, I just need good food in my house. I have to, like you said, feed my family and myself yeah. and I don't have the time to go and peruse the grocery store. And it was literally a matter of there's a McDonald's on the drive home. And there's a grocery store on the drive home. Which am I going to stop at? And my kids would love their Happy Meals and their French fries, but I knew that that wasn't, first of all, that would only get us lunch. That wouldn't get us dinner. <laughs> and I try to stay away from fast food unless we're on a road trip. But uh, yeah, totally, totally. So how have you seen, um, you know, in general, the whole notion of health and wellness, how have you seen it change over the last five or 10 years? I think the biggest change has actually been social media and the fact that we are able to see people on their wellness journeys. Um, social media obviously can be sort of a time suck, but it is also a really wonderful way to encourage people and independent uses it a lot. Uh, we, you know, we connect with military spouses who are living all over the globe. And if we didn't have social media, there's no way we would be able to communicate and connect these military spouses who are looking for inspiration, friendship, friendship, encouragement, um, any other way. So I think social media has been a really good thing. Um, but also that means that there's a lot of information out there and not all of it is good information. There are a lot of social media influencers. I went to Barnes and Noble recently and there were all these cookbooks by social media influencers and they were on, you know, they were like healthy cookbooks. Um, but none of these social media influencers had any credentials behind them supporting these cookbooks that were, you know, health, healthy cookbooks or whatever. And yeah. so I just really encourage people to 
use the internet, um, which is a great tool, uh, but do your due diligence and, and make sure that who you're listening to and or reading has some education behind um, what they're talking about. Uh, the other thing that I've seen in the wellness space is, you know, we just traditionally, I think it was, okay, you eat well and you work out and that's like wellness for you. But there are so many other ways that wellness can be incorporated into your life. And something that I think we do really well here at Independent is we don't push one way of wellness. Wellness looks different for everybody based off of your circumstance, what you enjoy, whatever. And just this past month in June, we focused on gardening. And when you talk about gardening, you wouldn't say, okay, that's wellness, except for maybe gardening in terms of vegetables and eating the vegetables, not the act of gardening. But we approached it from many different angles, talking about like getting outside and the impact that that has on your physical and emotional well-being. We had a spouse come on who talked about how planting a garden helped her overcome a, a really tough time in her life. Um, she had had a miscarriage and the act of planting and growing a garden was very healing for her. Um, there are so many different types of therapies out there. I mean, there's therapies like you can talk to a horse, maybe not talk to a horse, but go visit a horse and spend time with them. And it can be very healing for some people. Um, there is um, therapy where it involves like petting puppies. Um, <laughs> just so many different ways. And I love the fact that we're exploring those now. Um, we have access, especially in the United States, to foods that we normally wouldn't be able to have access to because of, you know, the logistics and everything, just the magic of technology. And, um, and so we're able to try different foods now, like quinoa, which you probably wouldn't be able to get normally, you know, back in the day. My mom was like, quinoa what is this thing I'm like mom it's quinoa okay you know <laughs> and uh and and that's just been really wonderful and for someone like me who gets bored really easily my husband jokes that I don't make the same recipe more than once um I I'm loving the fact that I'm able to experiment in the kitchen with different types of foods a lot of them are a lot faster than you think and it's really delicious but it's also wholesome and and i'm just i'm, I'm loving that so i think within the wellness space in the last five to ten years we've moved away from just the traditional eat well and move and it's just become just like a plethora of different options that no matter what you enjoy doing or how much time you have there is something for you out there um, and you just have to find it so just keep exploring does it also seem like sort of the the stigma of the idea of self-care and mental wellness and um like you say a bigger picture than just eat well and move does it seem like we've sort of removed the stigma from even talking about that it, it used to be that talking about taking care of yourself and taking time away from your kids or away from your husband to do your own thing it used to be kind of a selfish thing do you feel like it's more acceptable now to talk about that openly? Yes, I definitely do. At least in the military spouse circles that I am a part of, um, and I'm a part of a lot of different communities, whether they're in person or online, and I love talking about this with people. And I've noticed in the conversations that I'm having with people, spouses encouraging each other to take care of themselves. I heard a spouse um, offer to babysit, actually, so her friend could have an hour to herself, and they swapped, um, like, babysitting self-care times. And I thought that was really, really wonderful. I think we're also, it's becoming a lot easier now and more acceptable to ask for help or to, yeah, just to ask for help. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, try to make it anything different. Let's ask for help here. Um, where before, I think we all felt like we needed to do this on our own because, you know, we're strong, proud military spouses who can do anything and handle anything that life throws at us why we have a whole community around us and and even if you move um there are people there that are just so willing to be there for you because we have all done this before and i think that that 
from friends of mine who are not military, who have experienced and, and met some of my friends in the military community, the thing that they always say that sometimes I think we forget is how willing our community is to to be there for somebody, even if they just met. I mean, if you go to just the CDC, the number of people who are just like, oh, hey, I haven't met you before, but I need an emergency <laughs> contact. Can you be my emergency contact? Oh, by the way, hi, I'm Evie, you know? And um, that's something that's unique to our community and something that I think slowly but surely we're getting a lot better at talking about it. Um, especially, I think it's really helpful that people in leadership positions are being open and honest about areas that they have struggled in and that encourages other people to do that and I think it's only just going to get better. We're not there yet. It's not perfect yet. Um, you know, something that we're discussing at Independent on how to do this is approaching the subject of um, military spouses and substance abuse. Mm -hmm. It's not something I think that is too talked about right now, but, and there aren't a lot of services that I'm aware of, please let me know if I'm wrong, um, for military spouses. We have a lot of them in the military community for the service member, but not for the military spouse themselves. Um, and so that I think is an area that is slowly but surely, especially with the DOD, um, tracking, you know, like suicide rates and everything like that for dependents, that is something that I think is going to become more and more important because we're going to be made aware, unfortunately, that the numbers are higher than we think. Not to be read down, but. <laughs> um, No, it's reality and it's something that, again, needs to be talked about because it is happening and it's out there and we need to be aware so that we can reach out and help other people. I couldn't agree more. So tell us how Independent has stepped into this space. Tell us about your wellness spotlight series and tell us more about how you are reaching into the military spouse community. So our wellness spotlight series is a week long where we interview and do a Facebook live with a military spouse and who is on their wellness journey. And the point of that was to show that military like wellness looks different for everybody and that you might hear someone whose military you know wellness journey is similar to yours or different from yours and they might have a resource that you didn't know about they might inspire you to make a change in life that you didn't know about or they might make you feel like oh hey i'm not alone in whatever this struggle is um, and then generally we have contact information so you can always reach out to that person and continue the dialogue afterwards. But what I really love about it is that it truly does show that wellness looks different for everybody. We had one person on there who talked about how having a schedule was an important part of her wellness and that when she felt like her life was organized, um, that really had a positive impact on her stress levels, which made obviously her able to be a better wife and mother and, and community member when you're not as stressed, right? So, and that was just having a schedule. Um, and I just, I love the fact that we, it's any military spouse out there. So any military spouse who wants to share a component of their wellness journey, something that they've struggled with, um, something that they've accomplished because we love celebrating that too. Um, and we just want to tell those stories. And then other ways that independent does this again, because we don't push any one way with wellness, we try to use our platform to really just show different ways that and different resources that are out there. So we have our virtual military spouse wellness summit that we do once a year where we interview 10 experts. Um, we've had Taya Kyle on there, Gretchen Rubin on there, uh, Molly Burkholm, who is big in the yoga space on there. And then we also interview some experts who are also military spouses um, in the wellness space. We think it's important to have both. Uh, both military spouses and those who are experts, but maybe not connected to the military community, but can still speak to the challenges and health and wellness that the military community faces, especially spouses. 
um, we've had a sex expert on there because, you know, there, there are these conversations that are all happening, but a lot of people are afraid to talk about them. And so we had a sex expert come on one of our wellness summits that focused on the military marriage. And he talked about how to, um, you know, rekindle the flame and deal with separations away from each other. And I just, I love that about what we do here at Independent. And we're having conversations now about what our next wellness summit is going to be. The one we had previously was called Life with Purpose. And it really was looking at your life and how you're living it and making purposeful decisions. And we approach that a couple of different ways from eating with purpose, um, moving with purpose, where we had Molly Burke home, growing with purpose. So that's where like we had personal growth in there. And then we had the gardener, we had an expert gardener come and talk about literally growing. And um, so we just try to use our platform to educate spouses on the things that are out there that they might not be aware of that might really fit into their life and, and where they want to go and also maybe spark some creativity. And then we also try really hard to connect spouses because isolation, I think, is a really big barrier to wellness. And when you are isolated, you um, don't have that support system around you and just so many things can happen that aren't good when you're isolated. And so we really try to encourage spouses to reach out to each other and to be there for each other and to celebrate the successes. We talk a lot about challenges in the military space, but there are so many wonderful things that are happening and amazing things that we're all doing. And so uh, at Independent, we're just like huge cheerleaders about that. No matter how big or how small that accomplishment is, we just wanna celebrate it with you. I love that. So these are online summits, then it's not like everyone's going to one conference location, you can really dial in from wherever you are around the world, right? Yes, yeah, you can be a part of these events and participate no matter where you are. Uh, and that's where we really use technology, I think, in a, in a really positive way, especially social media. Um, we are hoping to move into more in-person events because we understand that that is crucial when dealing with isolation and just the human experience in general. We need that human connection. And uh, so we're, we're hoping to move into that space, but most of what we do right now is all on a virtual platform. Okay, I, I think that's fantastic. I mean, we all grew up hearing the saying, it takes a village, right? And I remember for the first few years that I was married to my army husband saying, well, we don't have that village because every two years we move and we have to recreate the village. And just when you're establishing roots, you move again. So I was thinking earlier when you were talking about the book, 168 hours, I was thinking, how many hours do we spend on social media? That should be the first thing to go. But as soon as I thought it, no, I took that back because my village is now virtual and I still keep in touch with people at every duty station and they are my village. And they, you know, we reach out to each other when we need anything, help, advice, um, anything. And so I think you're right. I think you're harnessing the very best parts of social media and the virtual world to help military spouses not feel isolated. So I think it's fantastic that you do those virtual um, series. Um, Thank you. Series. Yes. Yeah. And I'm with you on that. I work from home now and I realized that how much I'm communicating with people during the day, but I'm not actually talking with them. And it's both a wonderful thing, but also kind of a scary thing. So I, I did something which I've never done before. We are hosting a couple of ladies at our house tonight. Very, very casual, but I still have boxes and things all over the place because I'm not completely unpacked. And I realized if I didn't do that, I would probably never host anybody here because my house would never be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be, that's going to be a, a new experience for me is not apologizing for the piles that we all know and deal with when we move, right? <laughs> we have all been there. We're all going through it at some point in our, in our lives as military spouses, the PCS. I just did it. You just did it. I, I would be lying if I said there wasn't a box behind me 20 minutes ago that I pushed out of the way before we started our <laughs> webinar today. Because I thought nobody wants to see that box, but you know what, it's real life. I ordered a chair, it came in last night, the box was there. So again, good for you for hosting people. Are they all new to your community? 
Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I'm making I'm making two things. I'm making black bean brownies, and I'm making regular brownies. So I figure I got both sides covered. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a black bean brownie before. Are you going to like mix them up and not tell people which is which or is it pretty obvious? Uh, I actually think I could do that and get away with it. Ooh. I probably could. I, so I used to work um, with a bunch of military service members and veterans my last job and I brought black bean brownies and I went around giving them to people and nobody nobody could guess they were black bean. And I am very skeptical. Skeptical. There are certain things that I don't believe that need to be replaced. Sour cream is one of them. I'm it. I just love sour cream. Uh, Greek yogurt does not taste the same, okay? Uh, so I was very skeptical with the black bean brownies because I was like, okay, this is a treat. So when I eat treats, I'm just going to eat the real thing, right? But I made them and... I was sufficiently impressed enough to bring them to work with a bunch of military members and veterans and like 95% of them male too. And none of them could guess they were black bean brownies and they all said they were really good. Does this mean that they're actually good for you too? <laughs> you know, they're not as bad as Duncan Hines. <laughs> okay. All right. No offense to Duncan Hines if they're yeah, watching. Yeah, I think I think it's um I think it's black beans like really good cocoa powder, which I think is what made the difference. Is it was really high quality cocoa powder, mm -hmm. um, an egg, and sugar, and baking soda. I think that was like it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, I might have to get this recipe from you. Yeah, that's good. I think I, I think I'll probably it. be putting it up on the independent <laughs> site too, but I'll send you one. <laughs> Ooh, and Danielle has been plunking the links into the chat box for everyone who's viewing. Um, there's links to the book club with independent and the wellness spotlight series. So check out the chat box and let us know if you have any questions for Evie. I think we're we're winding down the 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 back and forth time. So it's time for our viewers to ask questions, but Evie, one more question. Sure. Um, where can people go to find out more about what you're doing? So you can go onto our website. I think again, the links have been posted below, but it's in-dependent.org. We are on, you know, all the social media platforms. I think our two biggest are obviously Facebook and Instagram. So we're on Facebook and then we're on Instagram. Um, our Instagram is independent org uh, and our Facebook is independent org one. Um, and you know, that's, that's where we are. That's what we're be. That's where we'll be. And that's where, you know, we'll be pushing out information about programs that we have, things that we're writing, you know, resources that we have found that we think might be beneficial to you to know about. Um, and then we also have our mailing list, which we use and send out about once a month. Awesome. Check it out, people. There's so much good information on there. Go and help yourselves. Evie, when is the next um, um, summit? Wait, wait I missed, did I miss what? Yeah. The the next next, one? Yes, the next summit is the first week of March 2020 kind okay. of crazy that I'm saying 2020 right now because I just got used to saying 2019. And we're halfway but. through it now already. <sighs> <laughs> um, okay, first week of March 2020. I'm going to be there. I'm signing up for it. How soon are you going to open yeah. registration for it? Or is it already open? It is not already open. It is, we probably will open like the big registration in January. Okay. All right, so there's time. No pressure on you right now. I just want to- No pressure, no pressure. And it's to. a virtual summit, so you don't need to plan to travel. Um, we do it in a podcast form, so you can listen wherever and whenever and however you want. Uh, so we really try to make it as flexible as possible to fit into the lifestyle that you're living at the time. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you have any podcasts that you listen to that um, you want to share with us? Are you a podcast person? I am a podcast person. Um, I forget what the name is though, because I'm not a names person, but Mind Body Green, I really like their podcast. I'm a huge fan of my uh, Mind Body Green. Um, and then I... <sighs> 
it's not really a wellness podcast, but I'll say it. It's okay. Um, I listened to a podcast called Millennial Money. Um, I am a finance major, so I've always found money and things like that to be and also something I'm interested in. Also talking about time, you know, a lot of people, money is also a big barrier to wellness in, in many instances, or it can be. Um, so I like, I like to learn about that. And then I really love Freakonomics. I know it's like one of the oldest podcasts out there, but I just love the variety. Um, mm -hmm. So like, I feel like no matter where I go, I can have an intelligent conversation with someone. Uh, and I'm a huge NPR fan. So if okay. I can't listen to NPR on the radio, I listen to NPR um, at home. Science Fridays, people. Science Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an NPR thing? Yes. Yeah, they do Science okay. Friday. And each Friday, they just like all their topics are somehow science related. And it's oh. really interesting. They had a really interesting one on coffee once. How, per yeah. how pertinent. Mm -hmm. as coffee together. Yes. Um, that's awesome. I See, I, I spend a lot of time in the car um, driving my children from place to place and going to the grocery store and sitting in traffic. Mm. Traffic in Florida could be so heavy. Um, and so I'm always thinking about podcasts so that I'm not just listening to the same songs on the radio. And over. I love music, but I feel like I should be enriching my brain a little bit more, like in the, um, in the carpool line to pick up the kids after school and to drop them mm. off. I feel like that's the perfect time to listen to podcasts. So I love to ask people what they're listening to. Do you? Yes. Planet Money is also really good. Yes, I agree, Nicole. Um, do know. you also do audiobooks or do you don't have time for that? I found like <laughs> audiobooks are really good, but I have a hard time like stopping in the middle of a chapter. I only do them on like family road trips. Our families are all over the country. I grew up in Wisconsin. He grew up in Louisiana. We've never lived in either place. So our road trips are big road trips and we like to listen to audiobooks on road trips because they're like 20 mm. hours long, just one way. Um, so that's, yes, that's when we do audiobooks. Yeah. Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, the Army, and I'm pretty sure the other services have this too, but they have an online library, uh, which is where I get most of my um, ebooks because I'm, I'm cheap like that. Uh, but they also have audiobooks on there, and you can download them for free. So Audible is great, but the online libraries are free. So Okay, free is good. <laughs> You're yes, helping great. us out with our wellness already as far as our money goes. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Financial wellness is, is really important. Awesome. Awesome. I don't see any questions coming up. I'm sure there are more questions or share a podcast that you know. There are people viewing. I'm sure you all listen to podcasts or audiobooks. Um, I do want to take a second and, and show off this awesome mug that we just got. We have an awesome sponsor in Maxwell House. They are supporting the military spouse community through our Coffee Connections and Coffee Connections Live. Um, they're the official coffee sponsor of the USO. So if you go to a USO center, you can always get a free cup of coffee, even if it's not Coffee Connections Day. Um, so big thanks to Mac Maxwell House for helping to support the military spouse community. And um, to everyone who's tuning in today, thank you for being here. Um, we saw somebody is at uh, Langley, Virginia. Where else are you guys viewing in from? Oh, my computer just made a funny noise. <laughs> well, I'm here at Fort Leavenworth. So if anyone's here at Fort Leavenworth, come say hi. Shout out to Leavenworth. Yay. Anybody on from Leavenworth? I'm at McDill Air Force Base in the Tampa area. Yay for sunny Florida most days. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I know we have someone off from Arizona. Shout out to Arizona. Woo, woo. I'll woo. make it there eventually. Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be cliche, awesome. but yes. But yes. <laughs> I'm, there's okay. more to that state, I'm sure. We have, a, yeah. we have a question for you in the question box. What is a fun thing to do at Fort Leavenworth? Oh, man. What is a fun thing to do? So my husband, well, if you're at Fort Leavenworth, I just realized downtown they have a walking tour and each stop has a little plaque and you can learn about Leavenworth, which was the first city in Kansas. Um, we also have the second, 
I think the first oldest restaurant no longer exists, but the second oh. oldest restaurant in Kansas is still here in Leavenworth as well. Um, and I, I love stuff like that. So um, yeah, go explore downtown Leavenworth and, and take an opportunity to read the little plaques and learn about the history and the people that were here. Um, there are actually some, some not notable people that were here because Leavenworth was a big stop. Um, driving distance from Leavenworth is the beginning of the Oregon Trail. So ah. I know if you were like me and played the Oregon Trail, you bet I will be stopping there <laughs> at some point. Uh, <laughs> but you then, won't have to cock the wagon and float it across the river and you won't die. No, no. <laughs> I won't have to do that. No, I'll be driving. So hopefully nothing happens with my vehicle on the drive. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so that's really good. Um, I and, and we're living on base. This is our second time ever living on base. And I just, I think it is one of the most beautiful bases that the Army at least has. I know the Air Force has some really beautiful bases and uh, the Navy and everything. But the Army is not known for beautiful bases. Leavenworth is a really pretty base and I just I love just walking around it so oh that's really good to know I feel like that's such a good attitude to have you you've, you've lived there what a month two months right now um we moved in two weeks ago two, okay two weeks two weeks and she's already singing the praises of her new town I love that I feel like <laughs> some people PCS with with a less than positive attitude and they don't get out and explore the downtown. And it sounds like every location has something to offer and Leavenworth is no exception to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just came from Fort Bragg, which a lot of people get really nervous when they have orders too. Don't be nervous. Send me a message. I'll tell you all the amazing things at Fort Bragg as well. There I loved go. it there. Absolutely loved it. Um, I think someone asked a question about wellness tips for the day. Oh, I love that. Yes. Best wellness tips during the day. What have you got? Best wellness tips, and these are going to be really cliche, but they're honestly so true. If you are feeling a dip in your energy, get up, walk somewhere, and grab a cup of water. It really makes a difference, and or go outside. I used to be so scared when I was at work, and I would feel like that one o'clock, two o'clock dip. Um, in my energy level and I really just wanted to take a nap but I couldn't and I started going outside and just taking a walk to my car and just back again and that five minutes outside really just had a, such a positive impact um, I, that was really really huge and also I encourage you to um, take some time off and spend some time just for yourself not doing errands. I really encourage that. Uh, <laughs> um, What's a good first step for people to take? If, if somebody's watching this and thinking, well, I don't eat right and I don't move my body and I don't take time for me and all of this is super overwhelming and I don't know where to start. What's an easy first step for somebody to make to start living a, a healthier lifestyle? Just choose one of those. So, you might have all the things that you want to change, but just choose one of those. And within, we'll just choose meals. An easy thing to do with meals is choose one meal that you eat during the day and make it really, really healthy. Um, if it doesn't matter what meal it is, a lot of people start with breakfast. It's really easy to make breakfast healthy. And another reason that making breakfast sort of healthy for you is really good because you're already starting your day with a win. Um, so you can really just pack a ton of nutrients into a smoothie. Um, you can spinach, you know, cauliflower um, into a smoothie, all of those things. Um, you can add zucchini to oatmeal. I know it sounds really weird, but it doesn't have, actually have a lot of flavor, but it's another way to add nutrients to oatmeal. Um, is gonna sound weird, but you can actually also add an egg to oatmeal and it makes it really creamy. It ups the protein, which oatmeal doesn't have a lot of, and so you feel full a lot longer. So just a tip there. And if you don't want to add an egg to your oatmeal, eat it on the side. Uh, <laughs> but I just encourage you to pick one thing. And if it is a meal, choose one meal and just focus on really making that meal healthy for a month or just even a week. 
start something small and, um, and, and start with those really small wins because when, when you can accomplish that and focus on that, you're like, yeah, I did breakfast for a whole month and it was really healthy. Now it's a habit and now you can move on to something else. I think what makes a lot of people stop on their wellness journey is they, they try to do everything all at once. So they try to eat all of their meals really healthy. They try to move at least 30 minutes a day. And then the next thing you know, they're really overwhelmed. They ate, you know, an entire chocolate bar. And now they're like hating themselves, which I also don't encourage. I don't think we should um, uh, punish ourselves for, for eating. Ooh, I love chocolate. Uh, but, and then they just feel like, okay, well, I'm just going to give up. So when you start with one thing and, and just do that really well and then move on to the next thing and then do that really well. Um, so for me, I don't drink a lot of water. And so what I've started doing is making sure that I drink a glass of water before every meal. And that's really easy for me to remember. It's not that hard for me to accomplish. And um, it's something that I can say, okay, I did that today. So just start really, really small. I like that baby steps. It's, it's mm -hmm. the easiest way to do it. Right. And then make it a habit and build on it. I like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Sonia, for that question. That was a really good one. And I'm sure something that a lot of people are thinking about, how can I do it during the day? Thank you. Um, if there aren't any other questions, I suppose we'll call it a chat. Um, Evie, thank you so much for being here. Is there anything else that you want to share with us before we sign off? Any other tips, any where you want to point us? Anything uh, parting words? No, I just, I, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that you invited me on here and I love everything that the USO is doing for military spouses. So thank you so much. And thank you for asking independent to be a part of this. I hope those of you who are listening will come and, and explore what independent has to offer and join us and, and let us know if there's anything that we can do or that we can um, help find for you when it comes to resources or information, when it comes to wellness. And uh, yeah, I'll just see you on the web. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Evie. And special thanks to Danielle Haro, who is our behind the scenes producer, who's uh, capturing everything in the chat box and taking care of you all viewing from home. We hope you all have a great week. Um, we're going to send you a survey to take about Coffee Connections Live. We would love your feedback. Let us know what you thought of this. Let, let us know who you'd like to see um, in the future. Or if you want us to have Evie back for more wellness talk, we can <laughs> always invite her back. Yeah. I love survey. <laughs> Let us know what you think. And thanks for being here. We will see you next month for the August Coffee Connection Live. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.